Hello, my name is Alan Hooper. I'm with Southwire Company. We're here at Southwire Solutions University where we teach safety and productivity training. With me is Chris from Rosenden. Chris is the safety manager and we're here to talk about how to set up the feeder, Southwire's cable feeder, in the proper manner. So as you can see the feeder right here it has a panel control right here system, so somebody's going to have to operate the feeder as the tugger's being used to regulate the speed in which the wire comes off the reel and goes into the conduit. So now Chris is going to demonstrate how we're going to set up this feeder. So all you have to do is brace this arm up against a brace that's on your jacks. And we're using a piece of wood here. You can use a piece of conduit. You can use a piece of strut. And in the event that this is too short of a situation for you, we can put a piece of two inch rigid on this arm to give us more extension if we want to do that. Just go ahead and take that off. Okay, if you just put that in this end right here, there we go, alright, now if you'll lower that arm, very good, alright, so now we have our feeder braced up for our wire pull, so now we're going to show you how to actually put the wires in the feeder, and lay it down. Okay, go on ahead. So we also have a safety latch here. You can't close that, it can't fall on you unless somebody lifts that safety latch. There we go. Now he's pulled out his pin, he inserted it, and now he'll wind that down on the wire as tight as he can. So now we've loaded the wire for our cable pull. So all we have to do now is basically attach this to the, uh, to the rope. But we're just going to show you how the feeder works to pull the wire into the conduit. So on our control panel, we have a stop, a forward, and reverse button on here. We have a speed control that's going to allow us to, to manage the speed of the cable that's coming off the reel and into the duct bank. A few of the other features we have here are ways to actually kind of lock this down. And we have hand brakes here for the tires to stop it from rolling. Okay. We also have foot pad anchors where we could anchor this to the floor if we needed to anchor it to the floor. In the event we're doing a, a wire drop, it will help control the wire on the way down. Another feature we have is we have all any of these three posts, they're just chain driven, wherever I need to get to to tighten up the wire, any post, this will work on. It's just for my convenience as to what post I want to use. I generally use the center post because I have plenty of room on the center. When we're going to use the feeder in conjunction with our triggers, you're going to need to get an adapter, okay? So we have a cord here for the adapter, okay? So when I have my triggers, what I'm going to do is take my adapter and attach it to my trigger because it is now a dead man switch. We have what we call here trigger option button. The trigger option button, when engaged, this now will only operate 
when the triggers are in use. Okay, this is how we set this up for our triggers. So once you have your adapter, you'll hook it up to the cord on the feeder into the remote trigger. You're going to have to power the remote trigger with the triple tap, which is also going to power your feeder. All right. So right now, just for illustration purposes, I'm going to go to standalone mode. And when I step on my foot pedals, the feeder runs irrelevant of what the person on the puller is doing. You see it's running. You can see it, you can hear it, you know it's running, okay? When I take this off standalone mode, now both the person on the feeder and the person on the puller has got to be on their foot pedals, in which case this runs automatically. Either person gets off, the feeder stops in conjunction with the puller.